If you're thinking, how can I hire an online worker from the Philippines? Then this is the video for you. Stay tuned and I'm going to explain what you do. Okay, so you want to hire someone from the Philippines and you're not quite sure how to go about doing it. So first off, I'm going to start off by saying if you're not wanting to watch the rest of the video, then you're going to make a huge mistake. But the link's going to be in the description. You can go on to outsourcingboss.com and you'll be able to find one of the best places in the Philippines to hire people online. That being said, this is some of the things that I think you should consider before you hire someone from the Philippines. Now, there is lots of ways to approach hiring someone from the Philippines. There's lots of jobs that you can do, but the first job that I think you should try and sort out is how can you get someone to help you free up more of your time so you are working more on your business instead of in your business. Quite frankly, if you're anything like me when you first started out in business or maybe you're doing it right now, is that you are working in and on your business and you literally don't have the time to do most of the things you want to do that will actually help you grow your business and the quickest and best way I found to get yourself into the position where you're working on instead of in your business is to find tasks that you can give away to other people to do or, or jobs that you need done that other people can do for you. So for example, if you have a repetitive job or something that you know you just have to do and it has to be done on a regular basis, if you can write it down, which is the majority of jobs, by the way, if you can actually write it down into some sort of procedure, then you can give that job away. Now, there's several ways of going about it. For example, you could, for instance, write up a Word document and how you actually do the process, and include screenshots and so on. You could record a video of showing someone how you actually do the job and how you want it done. That's a very good way of doing it because it visualizes and shows them what's going on. They can play it over and over and they can also stop at different sections and follow along with what you're doing. So among some of the first tasks when I got a VA um, to do different things that I got rid of was simple things. So as this particular VA, I was looking for someone who could deal with updating WordPress for me because I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of sites based on WordPress. I've got lots of sites that are not based on WordPress at all, but the ones based on WordPress, they have to be checked on a regular basis for updates and so on. So if there's a new security patches or if plugins need updated and so on. And that's something that I used to sit and go round and round and do. Yeah, it's absolutely mental. There's over 50 websites who are running on WordPress. So checking that was taking up loads and loads of my time. It was something that's still important to do because you don't want your websites having a security breach because you're running out of date software. So what I done was simply show the process of how you go about updating the plugins and so on on a WordPress site, give the virtual assistant admin access to the back end of it and away they went. And what you simply do there is you have them do it at the first time. You check over what they've done. If it's all done correctly, get them to do another one, check that, it's all done correctly, get them to do another one, check that. If it's all done correctly again, third time, then leave them to it. That's it. You know, obviously occasionally check in on the work that's getting done. Make sure that, you know, like you get a report each day saying, oh, I've done the following things and so on. And you can click and have a look yourself. So what I usually do is I have them cut and paste in the website with the WP admin address on it. So I can just quickly click on it and have a look if I want to. Now, what you'll find is you'll do that initially. You know, you'll check that quite a lot. And as time goes along, you'll only check occasionally. So that was one job that I got rid of. So that saved up quite a lot of time. I would estimate in the region of five hours a week gone, maybe a little less than that, but still quite a reasonable chunk of time gone of something that I consider important to do with your websites is keep them regularly updated. Now, the VA didn't have to have any technical WordPress experience or anything like that. They just had to be someone who could follow simple instructions and you just show them what to do. And as long as it's someone that can follow instructions, because this isn't a hard thing for them to do, then great, away they go and do it. Another thing I ended up getting the VA to do because they were updating the WordPress site, I thought, oh, hang on a minute, you could post my blog post for me or post the content for me. So again, simply showed them how to do that. Didn't need any technical experience, any special computer experience. They just had to be able to follow the instructions. And what I had them do was post the blog post on my behalf. 
have them set up the title, put on all the f stuff that I needed, and then I would go in at the end and simply make it live. Now, eventually that got changed to them scheduling it, so it posted during UK business time, because that's I'm a UK business, so therefore I wanted the blog post to appear during the day in the UK, not some random time at two in the morning, which is fine for people in different parts of the world, but that business is a UK business, so it's a little bit odd. So you just get them to schedule it, and then that's what happens. So suddenly, you know, I'm still writing the blog posts, and I've had my VA write some blog posts in the past there, which I then fix up to get it to the standard that I want to be saying the thing that I want to say. But as times went on, it's been less and less stuff needs to get fixed up with that. But again, it saves quite a bit of time. It's suddenly a job where you had to do it all yourself. Now you don't have to do certain parts of it. So then followed on from that was I wanted them to do the tweet about it. I want Facebook post about it. Also, if the any blog posts needed images and so on, I had them organized. They would get it via my company BO Design and they would just request it from the designers. Now, again, good thing about any process you set up is that once you set up the you know, what you're looking for, roughly the sizes and so on, they can just follow a system and get these things ordered. Now, because it's a dedicated designer doing the actual images and so on for the blog post, then I know it's going to be of a very high quality. Now, don't get me wrong, my VA has some Photoshop skills, but they are not at the level of quality high-end design is what I'm looking for. I'm trying to portray an image on the different stuff that I do at high quality. So therefore, it's important for me that a dedicated designer does it. But this is how your VAs can also interact with each other. She can request stuff through Discord, but what I do is get her to request it through the control panel for BL Design so that way I can actually see all the work stacking up and see what order it's done in and the times it's done. So if I want to go in and change something, for example, and push something forward, I can just change the priority on it. So yeah, so that's one of the ways of looking at, you know, hiring a member of staff is, well, what can I get off my plate? What can I remove? Especially if you're a small business who've got limited money and limited resources. Literally the best thing you can do for your business is get more time working on it and not just stuck in there working on the day to day because when you get a chance, freedom to actually work on your business, you start coming up with new ideas and new ways to grow your business and get new customers in and start to expand the thing as opposed to just doing all the jobs as they come. Now, with VAs, for example, you can pretty much train them up to do anything that you can do. You know, there's nothing that you can say and go, oh, well, that's off limits, that's too hard or whatever. You know, obviously, if it can't be followed in a straightforward system, then it's going to be a little bit more tricky, right? But most jobs are. Most jobs you will find that if you can systemize them, not only will it help you for future employees and future people doing tasks as well, because you can just hand it to them, say, here, this is how you do it. This is how the person done it before. And even your VAs, you can actually have them write up the process with you, you know, so you can show them it initially, get them in there, you can let them ask you questions and so on, but then they can actually work out a way to train other people to do it, which is really good if, you, if you're moving to the point where you want to have more members of staff. So yeah, it's definitely something to really consider, right? And one of the big mistakes that I see all the time is people trying to hire someone that can do everything. Honestly, you can't even do that with British staff or American staff or so on, they don't exist. People that do everything are generally the people who are running a business. You know, they're the people who are like, you know, they know lots of different stuff. They're not a master of anything specifically. Or maybe they know one or two things and that's what the business is built around. But they end up having to learn lots of different things to make the business work. Well, members of staff, that's not what they're interested in. They are hired usually to do a specific job, whether it be content writing, design, video editing, or so on. Hire people for a strength that they're good at. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get them to do other things or they're good at other stuff. Like, for example, I've got a video editor who is very good at 3D design. So he helps my son out with, does Roblox and as his own YouTube channel, Fraser to the Max, check it out. But my son does some things for Roblox and he needs a 3D artist. And it just so happens that the video editor that he's got for editing his videos happened to be good at 3D, you know, and it's just it's one of the coincidences. It wasn't, he wasn't hired for that reason. He was hired to be a video editor, but we get him to do the odd 3D work. So that's really good. And the same with like the video editor who I've got an outsourcing boss. He's a really good graphic designer and works on some of the BL design stuff. Now, as these videos go on and as I do more and more of them, we probably won't have any time for BL design. But, you know, this is what I'm trying to say is that, look, 
hire someone for something specific. Yes, they can probably do other stuff as well, but don't hire someone that just, you know, oh, I want to do this, that, this, that, and this. It's just not going to work out for you. It's not going to work out for them. They are going to be burnt out and gone within seconds. And, you know, you're not going to get the experience from it. And you're probably going to think, oh, well, I hired someone to do. And then you list off about five different things that no one person that you know actually can do. And then go, oh, well, that didn't really work out. I'm really not happy. I'll even tell you this, right? One of the VAs I had, I employed them in a business just as someone decided to leave. So I employed them that day and the following day, person's leaving their job and it just went oh there goes the person who's supposed to be training that person to help them in their role and now that person's gone so that really caused a problem and I had to then suddenly spend more time training up the new member of staff to bring them up to speed on what's going on which I didn't really want to do that way but we had nothing in place before we had no systems to just hand people and say here here's how you do this go ahead and do that so one of the things I've got the, that VA to do is make systems for future staff for future employees and it's turned out to be really really good so yeah so definitely keep that in mind you know hire for specific jobs get things taken off your plate, make your life easier so you can be working on your business and bringing in more money and more customers and more clients and that will really help you out, especially if you're a small business. It's scary hiring the first person from abroad, especially if you've never dealt with online workers before, but the success of it's going to be down to you. If you've got no time to train, no time to give them instructions, no time to actually help them start working with you, then you are not going to have a positive experience. It's going to be bad. You're going to have to set some time aside. Now, even if you get a couple of tasks removed from your plate that say free up maybe 10 hours a week, then you're okay, fine. You've hired them for 40 hours. You've got a full-time employee for 40 hours who's only doing 10 hours a week. But if those 10 hours a week, right, that have been taken off your plate just now, free up loads of time that pay for that person three times over and more, right? Then as you start to add other tasks and stuff for them, you're going to think, wow, this is absolutely amazing. Don't get caught up in the fact that they're only working 10 hours a week to start with. That's your fault. That's your problem because you haven't given them enough work to do. So yeah, spend a bit of time, get some work planned out, get some systems in place. Honestly, you'll have a fantastic time with your employee. Now, if you're interested in employing some from the Philippines, link down below to outsourcingboss.com. That will give you the link to one of the best places to hire people from the Philippines. I'm constantly checking out the market and what's going on with people, who to hire and so on. So I've found it to be really good. Once you've got the initial contact with the VA sorted out, you take them away and you pay them in your own pace and your own style and stuff like that. There's no extra cost to pay. So definitely check it out. Link's in the description, Outsourcing Boss, and you'll see how to hire someone from the Philippines. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and share it with any of your business friends who are interested in hiring someone from the Philippines and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.